are in Lakey, Texas, a couple of hours outside of San Antonio. Population, 625. Not where you would expect to find the largest collection of pre-war Ford V8s in the world. This is the Butler Estate Collection, and it's coming to the Mecham Auction in Dallas in September, selling at no reserve. We're in one of five climate-controlled buildings where these cars are stored. And JK, where do we begin? Well, let's begin by letting everybody know what the size of this group of cars is. Over 240 entries, 21 non-Ford Motor Company vehicles. So that leaves over 200 Fords and roughly half, 110 cars, are specifically 1934 Ford V8s. We know that the Ford V8 debuted in 1932. We've got some of those too. So we're going to see and we're going to break down the evolution of the V8 Ford from 1934 right up until the early 1940s. And let's begin right now. The Butler Estate Collection is predominantly 1933 and 1934 Ford JK. This is a 1932 Phaeton, but before we talk about the car, that engine was a revolution back in 1932. One of the most important engines, Bill, in automotive history, the debut, of course, 1932. Brainchild of Henry Ford himself, now big competition coming from both Plymouth and Chevrolet, everybody wanting to outdo each other, and Henry took 221 cubic inches, got 65 horsepower, started a legend, got off to a bit of a sluggish start in 1932, but over the next couple years that changed and this collection is going to allow us to explain exactly how that all unfolded. Yeah, by 1934 they had 85 horsepower, right? This Phaeton now is a good example of what a family car might have been back then that had an elegant look to it. Yeah, the fact that it's a four-door, it's a convertible and no roll-up windows, side window curtains, that defines the Phaeton. This one in the blue, black fenders, double side mounts, it's an exceptional automobile. Indeed. This room is a wash with three window coupes, JK. A lot of them just fabulously restored, like the one I'm sitting in, outside and inside, next to perfect. The three window coupe, what was the role that it filled back in the day? Well, a little bit of a compact cabin, no back seat, but it does have a rumble seat, and it was really all about the styling. Edsel Ford was getting very heavily involved in the design of these cars and really had a knack for every couple years getting it a fresh new look, and the 34 really has got the big look. On top of that, the flathead V8, now 85 horsepower, had a lot of refinements as well, and the buying public started to get very excited about owning a affordable V8 car. Sales took off. And with all the body styles available back then, the three-window coupe may be the one most people are familiar with, especially hot rodders, right. because we've seen so many of these modified over the years. This room in the Butler Estate Collection is a sedanorama. We've got two doors, T-U-D-O-R, four doors, F-O-R-D-O-R, and the beloved Victoria. And the Victoria, well known for having two doors and a big roomy cabin, room for the family with a big back seat. Now keep in mind, Fords in this time period, two different trim levels, standard and deluxe. A quick way to tell the difference, cow lamps on the deluxe, as well as the bright window trim. Yeah, and sometimes even this add-on, this Greyhound up here, on the top of the radiator. The thing about the Victoria name, though, is kind of interesting. They used it back then. Again, in the 50s, remember the Victorias from that era. And the Crown Victoria that was built up till 2012. We are surrounded by Ford Five Window Coupes, like this one. Now, this one was restored by a former Ford engineer. It's a non-original red paint job, added the spotlight, but other than that, this car's pretty original. Yeah, and a distinctive body style, that extra window making it the five window, gives extra room in the package tray behind the front seat, and also available with a trunk or rumble seat, it was buyer's choice. Now the grill on the 34, a little more stylish than the two previous years, right? Yeah, there's a clear evolution from the first year of the flathead Ford V8, 1932, into 1933, and then into 1934. A lot more than 30s era Fords, too. Look at all of these open wheel classic race cars from Franklin and Marmon and Rio. 
1950 Mercury lead sled from Barris, 1927 Track T, everybody's favorite, 57 Chevy Bel Air, and a 1947 Allard Custom. And we've got dozens more to go. Right. We're standing in the midst of 16 1933 and 1934 Ford drop tops, roadsters and cabriolets alike. This 1933 V8 Roadster that's beautifully restored. Now, back in 1933, the country was coming out of the Great Depression. People suddenly were looking to buy new cars, and they couldn't afford a Duesenberg with a top that went down. A lot of them chose one of these, but the Roadster and the Cabriolet, not really the same. What are the differences? Well, this 1934 Cabriolet has got a fixed windshield, and it's got roll-up windows. How about your Roadster? Yeah, just the opposite. This windshield is hinged. It folds out. We got side curtains, no roll up windows on the roadster. This, one of the real all stars in the Butler Estate Collection, a 1938 Lincoln Zephyr, one of five in the collection. And this car, the styling and the power plant, which we'll get to really the big story back that year. Yeah, this was uh, the efforts of Edsel Ford, Henry Ford's only son, to develop a car that would be close to the prestige of a Lincoln, but be more affordable. The styling speaks for itself, but there's something special under the hood as well. I would love to show you. Yeah, while the competitors during this time were building V8s and some had straight eights, this has a little bit more going on. Yeah, indeed. Of course, Lincoln had a big V12, but that would have been too expensive to put in this car. So, Ford Motor Company developed an all new, smaller V12 and I think that's really sets us apart from the other mid-price luxury cars. Only 267 cubic inches, 110 horsepower. Good things come in small packages. Well, one of the most often used terms in television is, we wish we had more time. And I think that applies here. After all of the cars we've seen today, JK, there are still more that we haven't seen including three state-of-the-art hot rods by master builder Jerry Kugel, plus a Bonneville land speed record holder at 250 miles per hour. That's set back in 2013, and that record still stands today. And there's even more cars that we haven't been able to show everyone. Right, like some great pickup trucks. We've got Woody's, we've got Mustangs, we've got Thunderbirds, and a virtual treasure trove of barn find projects. All being sold at no reserve Mecham Auctions in September in Dallas, Texas. And all thanks to the love of the automobile by the late Red Butler. And we hope that the next owners of these cars will love them as much as he did.